I'm Jackie. And I'm Ashley. Welcome to The Witching Hour. The Witching Hour is a little extension of Dumb Witch Club, where we give you a witchy quickie. <laughs> what that is, is we take a big topic, break it down into bite-sized pieces, and we have a little sip of something to drink. And I feel like my flub <laughs> indicated we, we already had, had something to drink. So <laughs> totally. it wasn't much, okay? No, it really wasn't. I'm all here. It's just tripping over my words. Anyways. Um, okay, so <laughs> this, speaking of, <laughs> this is our second bottle. We didn't finish the first bottle. We didn't. I'm making jokes, okay, people? But right. speaking of hard tripping over the words. Okay, I don't know. I have to pronounce this. Okay, this is uh, trefethen. Tr- tr- mm-hmm. Trefethen. Trefethen. Tre- is that how you would say that? Trefet. 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 What if, what if it's trefet hen? Trefet hen. <laughs> Awkward. No, it's hard. I'm not sure. I don't want to mispronounce it, but I'm not sure if I am. Trefeathen. Oh, trefeathen. Like heathen. Yeah, I maybe like it's that. that. Anyway, we don't know, but yeah. whatever it is, this is what it is. Estate grown Oak Knoll District of Napa Valley. This is a Merlot from 2021. Merlot. So this is a, oh my, this Ooh. matches our... Our outfits. Look how outfits. cute we are. Yes, this is a very... We planned that. Burgundy. I know burgundy is a type of wine, so don't get on me, but this is a very burgundy. You're like, you just said Merlot. Right. Like, is it a Merlot or is, is it a Oh, good heavens. <laughs> I don't know why we're even doing that, because no one's mean like that. Nobody is mean like that. <laughs> we made that up completely. No one's mean, and we're making them mean. I know. Cheers. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is a Merlot. <laughs> oh. Tre- <laughs> Tre- <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, you this is a Merlot. Me. So okay, what do we mean by that? Um as mm-hmm. soon as you taste it, it's just like red. <clears throat> and it's like dry. Yeah. And oh, it feels like I am having a headache already. I feel like I can't like I feel like I'm like not done drinking it, but I did swallow it already. <laughs> what does that mean? No, it Mm-mm. doesn't, except for it really does, actually. Yeah, it lingers a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, which, like I've said in just past episode, that, that tends to indicate a high-quality wine. So sure. it's a good sign, but it's a lot. With a name like that, it's got to be good. Yeah, it's just, man, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. A rare variety when we started, we included Merlot in our pioneering plantings of the late 1960s. Um, Focusing on the balance between bright red fruit and dark earth, this wine displays remarkable intensity. True fact. Yeah. Wrapped in a floral perfume and velvety tannins, it is also seductively complex and wonderfully food friendly. Okay. I'm not having it with food, but I agree with everything they said here. I do too. It is florally, definitely tannins. Mm. Stays in your mouth a long time. Uh-huh. It is complex. Well, so we were right. Yeah, and I think you know what? If somebody likes Merlot, this is probably a really good example of a good Merlot. Oh yeah, they would like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. If you like Merlot, then you sure picked a good one. Yeah, for sure. Not too peppery at all, which I like more. You peppery. like pepper, yeah. yeah. So do I. So like, yeah. This is not that. This Mm-mm. is round. But it's not supposed to be that. Yes. No, no, no. It is round. It's round. Yeah. Absolutely. Whew. Anyways, okay. What is this episode about? This episode is about familiars. Ooh. I know. I, I know. Like that. It's fun. That's like what a like, cute, fun topic. I think. Yes, I think that's fun and cute as well. So okay, but maybe you won't think it's fun and cute if you just know the history of familiars. But yes, that is a very good point. So tell us some of that. Okay, so historically, yeah, a familiar was a baby demon, yeah, or imp. Mm-hmm. given to a witch mm-hmm. by the devil right or gifted to her by another witch mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and to add insult to injury Why they not? were known to feed on the blood of witches which they would suckle from moles or birthmarks on the witch's body that sounds painful and that's also why they would like point they're trying to accuse someone of being a witch. They yeah. Point to like if they had a birthmark or a mole and say like that's the place where they're familiar with suckling. 
Yeah, that's wild. Right? Yes. Okay. It's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. Number yeah, one, sure. I kind of love a baby demon. Not right? gonna lie. I know. It's actually kind of cute. So like, it's cute. Oh, little cute little demon. Adorable. And if I was gifting you one, I would gift you like a really cute little baby demon. So cute. Perhaps he would be like little Mothman esque. Oh my gosh. I, I know. love that. I know. He would be really cute. And I feel like that's really cute. Also, like, Loki, like, really cool with Satan to just be like, here's your, your little. Yes. Thing. Like, that's like, Loki, that's nice. Super generous. It's really kind. It's very daddy of him. Mm, very much so. So yeah. that part, none of that. I don't have a problem with any of that. What I have a problem with is the way that it's used against. Correct. Females and women, of course, as always. Yes. Used against us. And there's lots of really interesting, like, illustrations from, like, medieval or whatever type, type yeah. time periods of, like, these witches who were just women um, yeah. with these creatures in their home mm-hmm. that, you know, I'm imagining must have just been, like, cats and dogs and things. Yeah. But they're <laughs> depicted in these illustrations. It's worth looking up, honestly. Yeah. Like, these, these fantastical creatures, which was somehow, like, to prove that they were familiars because they were, like, associated with the devil because they were witches. But it's like these creatures don't, those didn't exist. They don't exist. So, anyways, no. yeah. wild times. So, okay, we have evolved. Yes, past we've evolved. This. Correct. We've evolved okay. past this. We're sort of, and we're sort of in this era of like a witchy, like revival, right? Like, that's why we're doing what we're doing and why, like, this information is accessible to people now and everything like that. Yes. We're in this whole other era where, you know, not that all of that behavior towards women has changed or anything because it's still a thing. It but it's still a thing. Yeah, I would be remiss not to mention that. But I don't think anyone's looking for like moles on you and then no. accusing you of being a witch. It's it's changed forms and it's a little more insidious exactly. and a little more anyways, whatever. We're not getting into that totally. But in terms of this, I feel like there's a um a resurgence and almost like a rebranding of people saying and oftentimes it's their pet. Right, like saying that their pets are their familiars. That's like a common thing. Um, which you know, I think that I think what would be helpful is to make sure that you're differentiating between what that might be, but also what might just be an animal companion to you. Yes, okay, correct. So, yes. I think in, in a modern sensibility, you yeah. can think of a familiar as a helpful spirit that yes. takes the form of a physical mm-hmm. being. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I guess there's also room for it to be a non-physical entity. Yeah, well, what, I think whatever. So okay, I mean, mm-hmm. that may be, well, at least for me in this discussion, let's keep it to like in a physical form. It's yes. usually an animal. Animal, yeah. And so this can be an animal that's like you say, like a pet, mm-hmm. or it can be an animal that's like a totem animal, like an animal that you feel connected to communing with, even if you don't or can't like have it as a pet or interact with it in real life. Absolutely. But when it comes to the pet thing, mm-hmm. I think you're right. And I think that a lot of, especially witches, mm-hmm. use their pet and just call it a familiar right. because it's their pet. Right. And I would like to differentiate. I think it's important to do so. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to have the knowledge like you just demonstrated about the history of it and to just be able to um, weigh that and just look at that mm-hmm. and decide, am I going to sort of redefine this and appropriate this terminology? Do I feel comfortable doing that? Mm-hmm. And if I am, what exactly am I talking about? Um, because, yes, yeah. it you know, back then it wasn't really like physical actual beings that were associated with that unless it was in like the witch trials but right you know now people are referring it to that and i think you know definitions can expand that's totally fine we you know we can do that um and i think that sometimes energetically speaking we can feel that some animals might be more of that level of familiar yes and this is where my differentiation also comes in in my mind is mm-hmm. just because an animal is your pet Right. I don't think definitionally makes it a familiar. I think you choose a pet and maybe you're drawn to them uh, for karmic reasons sure. or for chemistry reasons or yeah. for an unexplainable reason. That is all valid, wonderful. Like I hold that up, right? Totally. But I think the difference 
at least when I'm thinking about this, mm -hmm. the familiar chooses you. Yes. You don't choose them. Mm -hmm. And when I think about pets that I've had, mm -hmm. I only have one pet that I would even put in this category of familiar. Right. And I've had many, many pets. Yes, you have. And she happens to be a black cat, but I don't think it has to be a black cat, you yeah, know? Of um, not. So I've had experiences of being close with animals, of feeling very connected to them. But still, something about this categorization um, had really like eluded me throughout my whole life. Absolutely. Until this one particular animal came into my life. And she, I mean, I got her and adopted her, so I chose her, but I didn't choose her for that purpose. No. She chose me. She became that, and I really had to like learn to accept it, and I almost like fought with it for a little while. Absolutely. I, I really do think that if you feel, I think this is sort of like a way to kind of feel it out, right? Um, if you intuitively feel mm -hmm. that this being, whatever it may be, cat, bird, doesn't matter, like yeah. whatever it may be, if you really feel that this is a supernatural entity yep. in this form, then that possibly could be a familiar to you. And I don't think that you only ever have one your whole life or anything like right. that. I think you can have more if you're if you're blessed to have more. I think you can. I don't know exactly how it works. I've never had one. Um, I've yeah. never felt this way. I love my pets, but they do not feel like supernatural entities. They feel like idiots. Yeah, <laughs> and I think <laughs> just dumbasses. There's nothing that you just love the crap out of. I love the hell out of them. And yes. They're adorable, but like they're not. That's not what's going on here. No, and I think an important point out of that, besides being funny and true, mm -hmm. is that you may never experience something that really feels like a familiar yeah. to you. And that doesn't mean you're not a witch. It doesn't mean you've been choosing the wrong animal. No. Like it doesn't mean anything like that. No, I think it's a thing that sometimes happens and sometimes just doesn't happen, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Yeah, I think, I mean, I personally think, I'll see if you agree with this, because we actually didn't talk about this at all. I think you can, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to manifest that. If that's something that you feel you want or sure. need, or I don't know, you're going through it where you feel like that would be such a help to you in these times or something. I think if you do, I think there's nothing wrong for asking for the things that you want. And if it's meant to be and meant to be gifted to you, then you'll receive it. I think that's totally fine. I've never felt the need to do that. I yeah. kind of don't want to do that. I feel like if it happens, it happens and that's great, but I'm not trying to encourage that or manifest that, but I think you can. No, I think you're right. Just like anything else that you can want and manifest and ask the universe to, you know, if it, if, if, if it's for you to have and right. maybe, yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And, you know, yeah, I just feel like I didn't ask for it either, but no. I definitely got this little magical creature in my life and I'm really grateful. Her name is Toast and she's the cat. So. Mm -hmm. She's wonderful. And she's awesome. And like, even if you come to my house, like you will literally never see her. <laughs> no. You see her occasionally. Yeah, yeah, of course. But she's just she's but she's everywhere she hears everything she knows everything she answers questions when I ask her in my head which I know sounds loco. no it doesn't at all that's usually what you hear when people do describe you know experiencing familiars is that there are there is psychic communication psychic downloads they get yes. familiar. that's probably an indication that that is a familiar and I seriously fought with this for so long like I was just oh, like, I know no. I was like that's weird that's not happening that's not what this and then I was like mm, okay no like, it actually is. it actually is and I had to accept it and yeah it's super cool but it's also like I don't expect it to ever happen again so mm -hmm. we'll see but and I can tell like I can tell I don't have that same experience with this being animal but I can tell that that's going on you get a different vibe from her than you do from the other idiot and yes. <laughs> mine and whatever. yes exactly like it's not the same thing at all it's like they're almost like existing on different planes totally but her physical form is on this plane and just happens to be embodying this body and that's yep I don't know and maybe that people are like that's unhelpful how am I supposed to do that I don't know you're just gonna have to figure it out well and I do think it's the kind of thing that when you know it you just know it and yeah. sometimes you still have to like accept it but you know it if it's there mm -hmm. 
And if it's not there, maybe you just accept that too. That's okay. You really should because um, not everything has to be that. You wouldn't want that. Imagine having all these familiars living in your oh house. Oh my God, so much energy. That's a lot of energy. That's a lot of scrutiny. Like, I would not like that. Sometimes witches and people in general just need animal companions. And you need to be, you know, caring for a creature and loving that creature. And that creature loves you back. And that energy in and of itself is beautiful and gorgeous yes it's valid it's witchy and yeah, I um we, i think a lot of people do need and benefit from that in their life 100 percent. so, so yeah. hope that clears hope that clears up some stuff makes it a little bit more familiar yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who am i who am i it must be because that is not like me cheers <laughs>